I hello everyone. I think I can start now. Uh, how are you so far and how is going the challenge? Is there any question before we go with that? Yes, go ahead. Jimmy, you can go. Hello, can you hear me? Do you have any question or anything which is not clear so far about the challenge document which we have started working? Uh, there is one question here. How do we connect? So, in principle, we know that Airflow is an orchestration tool and DBT is a data um, transformation tool which we have in Python. So, basically, if you want to integrate DBT with Airflow, you should have to have the full ETL pipeline, which means extract, load and transform so in that case the transformation part will be your activity and your extraction or loading part will be the other scripts so based on that you can interpret using airflow and you can streamline the whole pipeline through airflow They can work together because uh, your DBT is one of your um, tasks which you will run in your airflow, so they can work together. Uh, Shato, maybe in that case, if the data sets have multiple columns, so as a data engineer, you have to select uh, important features which will be used for uh, for the specific problem then you will once you have selected those things and uh, you can load it to dbt there okay abraham maybe you can unmute yourself and ask your question mm. uh, the final output which we expect from the SWIFT challenge is a full ETL pipeline, which is orchestrated by uh, Airflow. Plus, uh, when we talk about ETL um, or data engineering pipeline, we have these three steps the extract, then load, transformation steps. So, how do you extract data from the original source? Let's say you have expected to crawl data per day. Uh, so you have that raw data, so you have to process and transform that raw data into certain format which will be useful in the future scenario. That is the transformation part. Then loading part will be the next step, which will you load that into your data warehouse or data lake. Uh, You can use either of them. 
uh, whether it's CTL or ELT. But basically, these days they are using ELT, but traditionally we have been using for a long time ETL as a guideline extra transform that loads. And then once you have processed and transformed, you have load all the things. So you have created a, a clear data pipeline, which, which will be uh, easy to maintain and also easy to integrate with other pipelines also. Uh, because once you have done the data engineering part, the MLOps part will be executed next. That means uh, you need to use that specific data to other functionality will in your company. So in that case, you have to have a clear uh, data pipeline that loads data until the database or the, the data which you will store. Maybe it can be a database or S3, data lake, any of them, you can use that one. Uh, what I would say for this week is we expect a data pipeline. Uh, so we have CSV file, what is going to be our next step? So you have CSV file, you need, in that case, just think of uh, one thing in real life scenario, you will not get CSV directly. You either you have to crawl or you either have to access API or you have to access the, their application data. So based on that, you need to go for first extracting that. You can assume that loading CSV from uh, your drive or anywhere else. Then based on that, the next step will be processing that CSV into the appropriate format which will be needed for this week challenge. Then you have to integrate that one with DBT, the transformation part, and loading part will be your data lake implementation. And making it appropriate to your data lake implementation will make it complete, but this whole process should have to be uh, one pipeline and should have to be orchestrated by uh, Airflow. Okay, what are the data engineering parts? They, when we say data engineering, it's a big field, but the process of creating this making this raw data into usable format we, we could we can call it that one as a data engineering task so starting from the extraction and to the people uh, to the transformation plus loading data we can call it as the data engineering part how do we create the pipeline uh, we can create the pipeline using our python script but uh, our Python script should have to follow this the ELT or uh, ETL format. Then you can integrate that one with your Airflow, like one task at a time, which means extraction first, then go to uh, transformation, then go to loading. And if you follow this uh, kind of steps, maybe it needs a clear step so that we can call it as a pipeline. Uh, uh, for now, I couldn't show you because I don't have dbt installed in my machine, so I couldn't do that. Maybe we can ask game plan to uh, help in this session also. Uh, mm -hmm. this uh, I think I have answered this one because uh, based on your um, requirement, you can add or remove columns. So it is up to you as a data engineer to decide 
which columns are relevant in them and which are not which are irrelevant so you have to select that one and how to dockerize our project uh, for this project you can use um, like basic dockerization stuff but um, maybe you will face some challenge with integrating this airflow because airflow have its own separate setup and stuff so dockerization becomes harder in that case but you can dockerize the rest of that ideal things guidance mm -hmm. Yeah, Amit Nan is here. So maybe Amit Nan, before I start, you can go through a small, like a demo about DBT or a quest. Let's make it a question answering. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, I'm here. If you have a specific question, you can try to answer it. <laughs> Like if, if there is a, like a DBT related question in particular, something maybe because well, yes, it's true that in the morning I had connectivity issue and I couldn't show the whole demo. Um, anyway, you can ask later if you, if you don't mind, Mahalat. Okay. Okay, nice. So uh, let's start then how uh, how do we load ssp to post this i hope you have been doing this one from last from week zero onward so i think that could be much more easier because you can use uh sql and kami or any sql uh, command by connecting this to postgres Uh, it's ask me username and password. Try to log in and do that. Uh, when you have installed Airflow, you have to create users before that, so you can not face this challenge because admin admin is not is the default, but you can you have to specify that one in your installation first. So uh, maybe I could go to that demo then or about today's content. Okay, Rudolf, go ahead. Okay, Malu. Uh I'm facing a problem so far, uh, and I wanted to, to show you quickly the problem. And if you have an idea, you can tell me. Uh, maybe can we make it this after the session? Please. Can we make it this after the session? Well, if you repeat the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's I complete the tutorial, then... Okay. It won't, take, it won't take two minutes. Mm -hmm. Can I go? Uh, it's my connection or is your breaking? I think I couldn't see. I couldn't hear fully. I didn't hear what you were saying. Is my voice is clear or audible? Okay. I couldn't hear uh, Rudolf's question. Maybe if your question is yeah, you my question, okay. you your implementation stuff, let's do it after the session because it is okay, there. okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
Can you see my screen? Maybe I shared the whole screen so I couldn't um, see your uh, message here. So you can unmute and write your um, top your questions if you have any questions about the demo. So basically, where we gathered here is to talk about the airflow, which is our main Python scheduling and orchestration tool. And we have uh, this airflow to facilitate the data engineering pipelines plus uh, the computational workflow. Uh, as uh, you already heard about it, so uh, we need this. Um, maybe let me make it. Um, uh, we need this airflow to, co to manage complex workflows because uh, if you have been in big companies and you are asked to do so many data processing, so you have to have uh, multiple steps and multiple tasks, so you need to have that to handle the dependencies between each task because uh, one task may need the other task until it finished so uh, in that scenario you, do, you don't have any uh, know-how how to uh, when to terminate when to start this one when to let's say uh, we have a, a stock management um, a stock in our um, company so we need to implement data pipeline for that one so as you can see there are a number of uh, stores there so they have uh, a data which is generated within each store then this stock management should have to handle all the data coming from each store and process it to be used for the stock prediction purpose so in that sense we have a number of uh, markets or shops, then those shops will generate the, um, data, whether you can call it hourly or uh, daily, you have to uh, collect that data. So uh, that means this re collecting data from the three shops will, you can call it as a parallel uh, data processing. So you have to collect that one uh, in hourly base then you have to combine those data into one. Once the one hour uh, data collection is com uh, completed, let's say now it's uh, four, uh, four. So at five, I have to start my processing and I have to get those three shops data into one and I have to put that one to the database. So in that sense, you don't know when to start and where to start, which means like, uh, should I have started from the shop one or shop two, shop three, or uh, that the data collection from shop one is completed or not? So we don't know that one. So in this scenario, Airflow makes your life very easier because the data collection from one shop will be started once you have uh, assigned uh, scheduled that one. So if you schedule to be started after one hour so it will start uh, fetching data from, uh, from that specific shop then you have the three data and it will guarantee you maybe it makes your data pipeline reliable in that sense so uh, your downtown that time is minimized then you will go for easy integration with through a uh, number of systems because uh, systems in shop a system in shop b system in shop C are different, maybe they have different components, so you have to collect that one according to their need. So that means you can say that uh, shop A is grocery shop, shop B is something shop, and you have to integrate those all things. So Airflow will help you to do that integration. And you have also a clear monitoring and logging system in your airflow uh, stuff. That means you have your logs for each of the airflow tasks you have run so far. And you can do um, uh, a troubleshooting. Your troubleshooting makes 
becomes easier. Maybe. Okay. I thought there was message there. Then um, you can also have this dynamic scheduling because it will uh, airport will offer you uh, a flexible scheduling options. That means you can have daily base or yearly base or monthly base or time based. You can specify those things and your airflow that then if that works uh it will it, it should also manage your scheduling stuff so the key concepts uh, which we have in the airflow the first thing is dax or the direct cyclic graph which represents the entire set of tasks you have to perform or to organize and you have to reflect their dependency which means if I assume that I have to collect data from shop one first, so I have to execute the shop one task first, then I have to execute shop two next, then I have to execute shop three. So I can specify this dependency based on that dependency. My uh, airflow that will perform it. It will uh, it will collect data from shop A, then shop B, then shop C. Uh, then we have operators in your workflow. Uh, as you know that workflow are a sequence of tasks so your task can be represented into the DAGs then uh, there are many operators there which we can use like the Python operator if you want to execute Python function or bash operator if you want to execute bash script then inside your uh, DAGs or you can have email operators so many operators are there according to the demand of the situation you will use one of them or either of them or number of them then you have a task which is a unit of work in your DAG so that can be maybe your DAG can contain many tasks three or four tasks and those tasks may have a branch because as I have said shop one shop two uh, shop a shop b shop c are there then you have to uh, collect data from each of them so let's say it's your task your first task is to collect from shop a and it's running and once it's succeeded it will go to the shop two or shop b uh, that means if it fails your old drug will fail because you need that dependency at the end of the uh, to execute the next tasks that means your dependency will be noted like this uh, and a by shift operator and you have this task one should be dependent on task two once you have done task one you have to do task two uh, so in this scenario this dependencies and tasks may go step hand by hand in airflow implementation then you have your scheduler when you set the time like when to start the DAG and plus the starting date of the DAG also it should have to be specified there then the executors um, we have so many executors there and in order to execute your tasks and we have sequential executor one after another or local executor or salary executor you can go and read more about them. And in order to make it clear, just these are executors uh, which performs your task. Then the hooks are there, uh, which you can integrate this airflow with MySQL, Oracle, or S3, or any of the database which you have. Either it's relational database or non-relational database, it can have an integration tool with them then you can use that one then xcoms are the cross communication or this will help you to pass data from one task to another let's say you have the you want the data you want to combine the data between shop a and shop b so you have to pass the data you have collected from shop a to shop b then merge it there so you, you will use this xcoms but uh, these XCOMs have a limited uh, storage 
uh, like you can call them as a cache memory. Uh, if you want to store large amount of data, you need to use either S3 or any of the permanent storage, which allows you to store multiple many files. Then you have the web interface, which allows you to visualize your workflow, monitor your docs, and show uh, the logs of each uh, tasks which you have. And the, uh, the overall airflow architecture will look like this one. We have the workers, which is dedicated to, uh, responsible to do the actual work. Then the schedulers are the one which schedules and the executors and the schedulers are much more of similar, but they have the, their different roles because the scheduler will schedule, then the executor will know where to execute and how to execute. Then the metadata will have uh, the, a meta information about your specific DAG. Let's say it stores your logs in each of the execution of your DAGs, the execution time, and you can say that this is a metadata. Then their flow directory, uh, DAG directory, which contains all of your DAGs. That means when you create or when you install Airflow, by default you have to have this logs file and DAG file in, in itself. And that DAG directory will be ready to be read by the web server or the scheduler to execute your tags based on what you have specified. So in principle, you have to put this in your uh, Airflow home directory by specifying this specific directory. Unless in that otherwise, you will not able to get your tags in the web service or web server interface. Then all your tags which you have written will be read from this uh, directory. In that case, you need to restructure your folder in this scenario. Otherwise, it will make it a bit harder to access your docs and to get the desired outcome from the Airflow server, web server. Then the user interface, the Airflow user interface, which we will see later. Then the web server is uh, the one which is responsible to inspect or to show you or uh, yeah, your tag behavior plus tasks and anything. If there is anything there, you will also easily identify problems and failures in your specific tag uh, implementation. So basically, uh, here is some in order to visualize how it can process, you have to download data from the web. Maybe uh, in your case, it can be the CSV file, then you have to process that one. And the next one is the processing part, where to process, how to process, what are the things. Then uh, you have to store that data into your database or what they call it, data lake. So in this scenario, you, we have dbt here in the middle and your data lake in the next step. So this pipeline shows the clear airflow implementation because the task one is dependent on task two, then task two is dependent on task three. Uh, task three is dependent on task two, then task two is dependent on task one, then we have, you have to finish one after the other in this implementation. Uh, so uh, this is maybe example of the DAG work Flow. You have maybe you can start here. And you, when we say DAX, you have a clear meaning because direct acyclic graph. Direct means it have directed to one direction, and also acyclic means it's not. It cannot be uh, contained cycle or cannot loop. So you have a clear start and ending position. So I have to do this, 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 this first. Then. I have to do this one, then I have to do section two, task two, task one, task three, that, which shows the process workflow. As in real life scenario, you have a workflow there. 
then uh, you know where to start, then when to, where to end. That's it. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the thing which I have from the presentation perspective. Uh, maybe if, if there is anything which is not clear, let me know or else I will go to the demo. Okay, and that sense, uh, first, uh, what you have to do is just to install the airflow on your machine. Uh, basically, it is uh, recommended if you have um, Docker installed in your machine and you have this airflow installed from the Docker image. But if you could not have that one, maybe you may face certain errors while setting up the airflow. Uh, so I would recommend to use Docker, uh, the Docker image, airflow Docker image. And um, from my perspective, how I set up, I have installed that one from directly from PIP. And I have created the airflow user as, as you can see that this is I think the question for someone asked this one but you have to create this as a user in your airflow because you you have installed a fresh airflow instance and that will have this um, air as a clear SQL light database so it doesn't have anything uh, you need to create that one first so in order to access the web interface I have this one then uh, DB um, then airflow db in it, that will instantiate the, the airflow and these are the default airflow DAGs or the example airflow DAGs which uh, which comes with the airflow package itself so you can see uh, some of the DAGs here uh, so once this is completed you can say that your installation is completed the next is you have to start the web server or the airflow web server and um, so this is the airflow web server or uh, initially you can see maybe let me create it in the incognito tab if you have created uh, if you have completed the airflow integration installation without error, you would have to get in any of the ports which you assigned. And I already this done this one before. So you would see the first thing is this one, the one which asks you for username and password. Then I have done this. Um, then uh, as I have said, there are uh, so many example tags there. So here you can see all of them. And in order to navigate in this um, uh, interface, you have the DAGs and you have their um, definition here. You can go and check the graphs, how they are linked. And there is a question. Or Hey, Rodolfo, go ahead. Maybe if you have any question, you can unmute yourself and ask. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask about the pop. Mm -hmm. uh, during the, yeah, I can see you often it is a uh, uh, 80, 80, but in your case, uh, I can see 80, 81. 
Yeah, my AP80 is already posted by another uh, web server, so yeah. I have to use the AP81. In yeah, I'm asking the question because uh, uh, since I have uh, installed Airflow, uh, okay. I'm not able to see to see it on the uh, on the browser. So that's why I was asking which port, uh, how to know the right port uh, to use. You have to check the ports in your available ports in your machine or else you can use random port numbers. Because those ports which have been reserved for a specific web service is there in your machine. So you can check that on your machine setting. Okay, thank you. But how I don't know yet. To check your port. Maybe you can use this, uh, I think, the, when you start the web server, you, have, you, can, you can specify the port number exactly, which is not uh, used in your computer. And yeah, uh, airflow start, uh, web server, then you can specify minus P, the port number there. Yeah, in Docker, yes, you can find there also. Uh, then the next thing is um, maybe what time does this start starts, when, where, how, the task duration, you can uh, check each and everything here. And you can get also the detail about that specific tag from the web server and also if you don't want to wait until it starts, you can manually trigger this specific tag, then it will start running. So this is running, and these are the signs where you can see that the specific tasks are how they are they going? Are they deferred or failed or quit or removed or restart running? any of them maybe this is the task status so you can check this one and also if you want to check the code also you can check the code is here so how does it work and what are the things which you need to specify as i have said earlier there are many operators then they have used for the specific one is the path operator and also they have integrated with s uh, so, in this specific DAG definition, let's see. So, you have the DAG ID and the catch up force and the start date, when is the start date for this specific, and the DAG ID is the specific ID which will identify this specific DAG. And if you don't have this one, will not execute and you have to follow the proper naming structure and if it doesn't have any schedule it's uh, being put as none but you can replace this schedule to daily or you can see here or monthly or yearly or by specifying, specifying the time you can do that one and what else is there yeah, in the operator section, you have the task ID for that specific task. And this is it from the, just as a navigation for the tags. And you can turn it on and turn it off or compose it if you want. So that gives you more flexibility to do your task. And 
um, once you have installed the airflow then you have this airflow folder which is, which will have the main airflow safety, safety file or the airflow configuration file your web server and we have logs to all of your tags which are currently running and also that the scheduler's log so let me start by explaining the web server so as you can see the uh, airflow configuration file is big so it's a bit harder to configure uh, inside this one but you can modify according to your need maybe if you want to add something email or any other additional tasks here or s3 pass you have you can you, have, you can find it in the airflow safety file uh, or the configuration file and you, here it contains the database maybe you can see that my dark folder is this one I, or i can change this one to the, my current working directory which i want uh, the now i have used the sequential executor but you can use the celery executor or any of the executors out there based on your need and also you have the database configuration currently it is sqlite as you can see and you can like change this one to your postgres database configuration or any other database which you will use and it have the web server also mm -hmm. so this is the web server the host is 000 this is the port so you can change this port also here in this uh, airflow starting point or the configuration file mm. then this will have the main airflow airflow configuration file so um, you can play with that and you can as you can see that i have uh, run some of the ducks and their uh, logs are here so i, I can check the log what's going on, what's the start, and how it's done. We can check all of things, this thing. If you have any print statement, it will be up here, here. And um, yeah, this is it from the log file perspective. And then, this one is the web server configuration file so you can modify it up according to your need based on what's your uh, specific implementation needs because if you want to have a, a mail server you can use this one and then comment then pass the email and the, all the things which you want so uh, that's it overall let me show my um, like basic uh, ETL pipeline which I have created earlier for this purpose. Then um, I have uh, three Python functions which I stored them in this specific file. So the source folder will contain the extract to load transform data Python file. So the extract data from the data source maybe you can use this one and you can add your extraction logic either whether you can read from the uh, s3 or you can read from your g drive you can read from any of the uh, from your local uh, paths so you would specify that one and the load data will help you to um, load that one to database so I have used the XCOM pool because my data is small, uh, as you can see. So I have returned uh, this one also. So basically, 
it will get the result from the keywords uh, then it will get data and it will add the transformation data here and it returns then the load data will print the final data uh, then um, when I go to the main or to the main runner pipe or the one which runs my ETL pipeline, I have to start by specifying with the owner of this DAG. When it depends on whether I have to pass this one. If it depends on the first, so I have to make it true. If not, I have to make it false. And who is responsible for this one? Me and email on failure. If I want to email when it fails so i would make it this to true then email on retry if it makes any retry while there is a failure so you can make set it this to true and the, the maximum retry point i've specified as five and the maximum retry delay or the delay between each uh, retries can be one minute and this is the thing which you can specify yourself then the next is the DAG ID the specific DAG identifier then the default args will be passed from this then the start date I'm going to start this specific DAG I have specified the date or you can specify any date you want then the scheduling interval as I have this is time interval so I want to give it in uh, time delta scenario rather than using the add daily or something if you want it to be in daily ways you can have this one and the next is to to uh, like do the task what to execute first when to execute then task one is the python operator to get the data task two is to transform the data task three is to load the data so my task uh, i don't want to start task two before the ending of task one and i don't want to start task uh, three before task two ends so i have to specify this operator as a directing position and so this is the dog then i have to see here how it's uh, executed so you can see the dog's image here and there i have to get the data it's a python operator i transform it's a, also a python operator then I have used the same operator for all of them. So if I trigger this manually, it will start to execute. So uh, here, as you can see, the green sign shows success. So I hope it's, uh, it have executed successfully. I can check this one from the logs. Mm. Based on the time, maybe let me check this one again. Yeah, this is it. The printing uh, data. Then the second task is I have transformed the data into database. Then the third one, yeah, yeah, the transformer data, then the, each of your print statements have been here. Maybe because I have used only print statement, if I write this one to file, that could be possible. If I write this one to S3, that could be possible. And you can have many, many more options, but in order to track that one, you can use the looks how it's working there and the other kind of um, maybe another demo from the perspective of branching maybe i have this one 
uh, this is the other example which I created for this purpose. Uh, what the actual goal is to decide based on the current running time. So the week, the current weekday is if the current weekday is zero, it's Monday. So I have to execute the Monday task. If the current weekday is uh, three, it's Wednesday. So I have an interim uh, tasks which I need to submit. And if it is uh, the weekday is five or Saturday, so I need to submit my final task. Or if there are another tasks. Um, if the day number is another one, so uh, it will execute the other day task. Uh, in order to do that, I need to use the Python branching operator to make the decision. So I have to pass the Python callable function here, then provide the context. Press don't that. It will start if it's it's. If it's Monday, it will execute that this is Monday for the challenge introduction. Then if it's Wednesday, this is for interim submission and task. And if it's a final or a Saturday, it's a final submission task. Then according to this implementation, I need to define the operators for each of the uh, tasks. So I have defined the Monday task operator. Tuesday task operator, Wednesday task operator, uh, and also Saturday task operator plus the other day task operators. Then, if I want to send that into an email, so I have to use the, this custom email function, which will accept the keywords, and that will use the XCOM value to extract the and that specific function return, then it will send to this email address and then pro alert. So that means today is Monday, so you have a challenge introduction today is uh, Wednesday. You have to submit your interim submission. Today is Friday, uh, Saturday, you have to submit your um, final submission. So based on that, the planning task. Uh, which is dependent on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Saturday, and other day tasks. You can make it either in this way, or if I just want only a simple alert for that specific uh, day only, maybe for the other day, I need only a motivational uh, email. So uh, today is other day, so you just relax and work hard for the next submission. So I can specify that one then the email task operator will accept this one. And the message, today is Monday, today is not Monday. You can specify it based on your need, but this is for just demo purpose. Uh, I didn't do much on it. But this is it. You can see that I have this that I have run it previously. And like task to branch to make decision it's as always showing me success um monday it's because it's not monday it's not working uh, wednesday because it's not today it's not wednesday it's not working saturday today is not saturday so it's not working then um, the other day okay so it's working uh, because today is uh, tuesday then sending email is no is failing because I didn't configure the email thing to be run. So I can see the logs here, what's going there, and why it's not running. So I can debug this one based on this information which I have. So if I want to start it manually, I can start it manually like this. Now you can see that all the the email operator is failing. Yeah, the connection is refused. It says something is there, so I need to fix this one in order to send email to my specific tag. Then, 
um, uh, think this is it. If you have any question which is which needs to be clear, you can ask. Here is the graph view of the branch. You can see uh, how they are branched. Because all of the tasks can run parallelly, it's not one after the other. We only need if the other um, the task is successful. So I need to send in there. But I can spe specify this one to the whole thing. I can merge this one if they are successful to send the image, uh, the image. Uh, that's it, I think so. Uh, if you have any question. Uh, I have installed their flow, but those folders are not there. Have you installed that one with Docker? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, do you have any question? I can I couldn't show you that with now because I didn't install DBT on my machine, so apologies for that. I would make it available in the repository so you can check the flow. Uh, Airflow is a tool, so you cannot load direct data directly to Airflow, but you can load data through Airflow uh, from the CSV. I would, uh, maybe I would add the uh, DBT integration with, uh, I will ask Mtnan to add that integration with Airflow. And I hope that will help more on the repository. We, we will uh, use that repository. Okay, uh, so any question, anything else? If you need to discuss, uh, Rudolf, maybe you can raise your question here and we can um, see that one. Um, anyone from the academy team, you can stop the, the recording. Okay. Mm. So my, my question is uh, the fact that I'm, I'm not able to, to see the airflow on my browser. Okay, can we see your screen then? Let's see. Okay. Mm. 
maybe this could be helpful for those who asked me about DBT and their flow integration. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so 